in my opinion, catching the essence of a person or their character in a portrait is very difficult. And doing so for yourself is even harder. But I was inspired by this artist who creates a self-portrait every year on Self-Portrait Day. Not only did it seem challenging, but it seemed fun. And I wanted to try that for myself. Recently, I really got into oil pastels. After creating this uh, tiny picture of a church for my oil pastel basics video, I immediately went for a very large piece and created this portrait of Damiano David. And I had so much fun creating this. I didn't, I didn't think it would turn out this way. That's why I felt the confidence to start my own self-portrait next. What I did first was I tried to take a pencil and sketch out my face. That was already way more difficult than I anticipated. After several tries, I ended up with this. And because I am very impatient, I immediately went, I thought, yeah, okay, one sketch is fine. I don't need to study my face anymore. We'll just wing it. I have some nice reference photos. While I was filming one of the other videos, I realized that I accidentally stood in front of my mirror and it looked like a beautiful halo around the head. Now let's take a look at the actual painting process. I also decided to keep my glasses in the portrait. I do consider them part of my face. Now I've been wearing them for two and a half years. That's why I wanted to keep them in the portrait as well. Okay, let's talk about the painting process in voiceover. I will first talk about the process of creating the self-portrait and the mistakes I made with the Damiano portrait. The pencil sketch I just showed you before I started was actually very helpful, more than I anticipated. Getting the features somewhat right at least once helped me identify mistakes I did on the larger scale. Afterwards, I took the Sanguine Polychromos pencil. The Faber-Castell Polychromos are oil-based and I didn't see a problem with using them for the sketch. When I painted Damiano, I used a black pastel pencil. That was a mistake I learned from because the oil pastels aren't fully opaque and they were unable to cover all of the black lines I had created. It was simply too dark and therefore I then for my self-portrait used the sanguine color. Now let me share a very important thing I learned from the Damiano David portrait. An oil pastel portrait the way I paint it will look utterly stupid at first. It will get better. There is a stage where I place my first colored shapes and I cover the paper with oil pastels. All of the paper should be covered with paint and that first layer will not look good i might try out other ways to do this in the future but for now it'll look stupid i try to really show the process and not skip important parts maybe you know the phrase blink and you'll miss it that's definitely what happens with oil pastels when you blend the paint it can change it, it can change the complete painting in seconds. After the general color shapes are on the paper, I then concentrate on small areas of the face. Usually I start with the nose because it can then work as an anchor for the other facial features. So prepare for the stupid and now let me answer some questions while we watch the process together. The first question is, why a self-portrait? Over the course of the last year, I continually work on portraits. It wasn't really something I expected to enjoy much until I started the 100 heads challenge. That is a Pinterest board with 100 portraits and you try to paint that in 10 days. And never would I ever. I'm still going back to it whenever I don't know what to paint or feel like painting a portrait and currently I am at portrait 50 something. So don't stress yourself more than you have to be. Unless you enjoy the challenge, then go for it. 
Also, there are so many beautiful people on this earth. I can completely understand why many artists have a muse. Some people are meant to be painted or they inspire you in such a way that makes you create constantly. That is the case with me for many, many people. For example, all members of the band Maneskin, Gal Gadot, Arben Wise, Timothy Chalamet, Lee So Hyuk, Celine Murphy, and so, so many more. All of these people I want to paint at some point. After watching the artist I mentioned doing his self-portrait and being in dire need of a new profile picture for my social media channels, I decided to give it a go. You can now see my setup. I have all the swatches to my left as well as the oil pastels, something to drink and then my little easel for the desk. On the right I have the reference picture. And sometimes, if it is very hard for me to make out a color, I also have the iPad next to me and there is this program Procreate. It is a painting program and has a very nice feature. If you have, for example, the photo, the reference photo, and you hold down your finger on the screen, it will show you what color at that exact location is where you just tapped down. If I ever didn't know, is it gray? Is it brown? Is there a blue tone in it? I was able to find out that way. So that's a pro tip. If you are not that good at making out colors, you can use the color drop function. I'm pretty sure there are other programs that have this. Let's go on to the next question. What are difficulties I have with the self-portrait? I personally struggle a lot with the overall proportions. I keep pushing an eye or the nose a tiny bit to the left or to the top, only to realize that oftentimes I didn't make it better, I make it worse. That is a difficult combination with my tendency to go into a painting without a definitive sketch. There are two options. I can either work on a better sketch and prepare more in the beginning, or I can work on accepting imperfect results. Both are equally important, I believe, but I went with the latter one. Accepting flaws where they are, leaving an imperfect painting standing and saying, it is done, even though it is not exactly how I picture it yet, is something that helps me quite a bit in the long run. Another difficulty for me is the different viscosity of the oil pastels. saint Elier has different consistencies and transparencies in their sticks. And it happened several times I wanted to blend the paint but only blended the top layer because it was a different viscosity and didn't mix well with the lower layer. What went well? My husband, my wonderful husband, was aware of the struggle I was facing with my oil pastel brand decision. I could not decide between Carandache and saint -Elier. Both have their upsides, both are of incredible quality and both have the consistency I was looking for. In the end, I ultimately went with Carandage, and then he gifted me the Sennelier portrait set. And that set is incredible. I wouldn't have been able to create portraits like this without it. It is a game changer. I have yet to paint a dark skinned person with it, but for the two light skinned portraits I did so far, I only missed a green and a purplish blue shade. I went ahead and got these three colors separately to accompany the set. That was a pleasant surprise and makes for half the portrait in my opinion. saint -Elier also has a landscape and I believe a still life set. I mean they know what they're doing, they are a great artist grade brand. If you already know you have your pet issue and only work on landscapes, then that might be a very good thing for you. So the color finding went very well for me. 
Also, I love the stacking quality of the paint. They are not fully opaque all the time, but for example, while painting Damiano's eyes, I felt like I was really applying his makeup. Same with my glasses, I first complete the face and then I place them on my nose afterwards. Now, we all know the trouble we have with the second eye. <laughs> And I was struggling quite a bit. You can see me try and correct the, well, right eye several times. It just looked too large, then it was too small, then it was only the iris that was too large. And I kept correcting and overcorrecting. At some point I decided to let it be. Continue with another part of the face. I continued with the lips and thought I can go back to the eye later on with fresh eyes <laughs> sorry that is what i oftentimes do when i struggle i concentrate on another part and come back to it later and if it then still doesn't look the way i like it i make use of what i just mentioned and try to let the imperfect be imperfect a thing that is very difficult with oil pastels is to get small details and thin lines. What is very helpful for me is this paper stump. I use it quite often to make an already existing line only half the width. With the Sennelier and Caran d'Ache you can easily take away pigment after you applied it. Otherwise, I also have this chalk holder, which you will see whenever I try to make very fine details. I especially had to make thin lines with my glasses. Now what I do for very thin lines is the following. I take the white pencil, a pastel pencil I have, and I contour the glasses or where they are supposed to be. By using the pencil on top of the existing layers, you create a different surface, a different surface of consistency. So by simply creating this tiny disruption in consistency, you will help the pigment stick to where you want it to be. It also helps that I always use one side of the pastel stick for broad strokes and the other I try to use up evenly so that there will always be one sharp edge. If you don't have a sharp edge on your oil pastels, you might want to sharpen it either with a knife or on a piece of paper. Now, the next question is a bit difficult to answer. How can you create a true likeness? I felt the distortion pulling the whole time. You see yourself every day, but you truly don't stand in the mirror and study your face. You get a fleeting impression from the reflection and it shows an overall picture consisting of your individual features. Without having focused on your individual fe features, it is hard to recreate the overall impression. I constantly thought, that can't be. I know my nose can't be that round and I know my eyes need to look a bit more hooded. I just know. It is my picture, therefore I am the expert. And that is just not true. Painting is about observation and bringing your observation to paper. What helps me is a meditation technique. If there is a thought, like I just mentioned, I acknowledge that the thought is present. Then I let it go and continue with an hopefully impassive observation. Most times that was enough to separate the distortion pull from the actual picture I was trying to paint. Now the next question would be, can anyone do a self-portrait? And the answer for me is yes, of course you can. And I believe everyone should because it can be a lot of fun. It can also be frustrating if it does not work the way you want it to. So my answer would be yes, everyone can do a self-portrait and should probably do a self-portrait. However, be mindful of your tolerance for frustration. You want it to be an enjoyable process. If you really already know it might not look like you 
then you can always go the abstract route. Just do whatever brings you the most joy and the most joyful painting experience. Going abstract is actually very difficult and I might try that at another point, doing an abstract self-portrait. I already tried to not take myself too seriously from the beginning by using this deer-like expression I sometimes have. Sometimes I really look like a deer caught in the headlights, especially when I am thinking, when I try to figure out something and I stare off into the distance. That's the expression I have. <laughs> so not really the most flattering, but a very typical one. Maybe try and bring some humor into your painting experience and not take the process and the painting too seriously. The portrait itself is only half of the painting. There is also the background and whatever you decide to do in the background can alter the appearance of your self-portrait a lot. I knew from the beginning I wanted to have this color in the background, but with the Damiano portrait I knew I wanted it to look very dark and enhance the intensity that Damiano has in his gaze. Therefore, I went with very dark colors. You can also see me make a mistake in real time because I elongated the neck towards the sweater. Well, hindsight is 2020. To say it with the words of a friend, that is a long neck. <laughs> I do have friends who tend to roast me. <laughs> Well, it is a long neck, it is too long. Um, one of the mistakes of my self-portrait, but mistakes are good. And I don't believe in the next self-portrait, I will make the neck too long again. I learned from it. Also, when you try to accept your portrait for what it is, and then you go back maybe a year later and paint it again, you want there to be progress. You want to see that your hard work paid off and you got better. That mindset also helps me accept flaws in the painting and let the painting be as it is, imperfect. Now the final step was to use my gold oil pastel stick. Karen Dash as well as Sennelier both have iridesc iridescent colors but Sennelier only sells theirs in a set and Caran sells theirs individually. Which is why I went for the individual colors. I only wanted uh, gold, bronze and silver. Final thoughts on the portrait. There are many things I would do differently now, which I guess is called learning experience. The whole face is a bit stretched and the forehead too short, the neck is way too long and there should be more shadows in the center and right side of my face. However, this is only the third portrait in full color I ever did, so I am still very happy with it. It was a very enjoyable painting experience. I am falling in love with oil pastels more and more. They are an amazing medium and if you want to know more about them, you can check out the two videos I did on them so far. This won't be the last thing I paint in oil pastels, that much is for certain. I do hope I inspired you somewhat to go and create a portrait or maybe even a self-portrait. If anything of this was inspiring you, please let me know. I'd love to take a look at what you are creating and feel comfortable sharing. Also, I hope to see you in my next video. Comments and likes are always appreciated. And thank you very, very much for 408 subscribers. See you in the next one. Bye.